Greetings Internet, this is Mad Marty coming out to you today and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for my channel. I'm going to do my first reaction video and reaction videos is something that I typically do not do on the channel. Most of the time I do things that are a little bit more silly or fun. I like to do video game reviews, product reviews, restaurant reviews. And the reason why I do product reviews as an individual that is doing single living I like to get stuff on Amazon and see if the item I get makes my life easier. And likewise, um, I'm an individual with physical disability. I do have difficulties with walking and motor function. However, uh, up here it's all there, at least I think it is. But last night um, I came across a disturbing video. While watching the channel Lackluster, and truth be told, I have a guilty pleasure watching channels that do police interactions with average citizens. Uh, sometimes First Amendment, Amendment audit channels, but I'm not a First Amendment auditor. That's not really my thing. I'm by no means a legal scholar or anything of that stature. But I came across this video of a disabled man who was trying to do a checkout in Target for a bike takes place out in Albuquerque, New Mexico on August 19th, 2022, so a year ago from this recording. And the video is a little disturbing, so just warning you right there, but we'll go ahead and watch together, and I'm going to give some of my input as an individual with disability. Okay, let's go ahead and start watching this thing. Okay, first of all, when they're walking up on the gentleman here, his back is turned, he doesn't even know he's being approached by police yet. Uh, you know, I'll give this guy credit, you know, I can't ride a bike, so here he is purchasing a bike, and you see all this cash laid out on the, uh, register, on the register, or the self-checkout. Now, myself personally, I'm not a big fan of self-checkout for this very reason. Uh, when I walk with a cane, the deal is, is I only have one arm at all times. So I can kind of sympathize with this guy because if I'm whipping out my wallet, you know, it's hard for me to pull out cash without having it somewhere to set. You know, usually I lean into an object or something like that to hold me up so I don't have to rely on the quad cane. But uh, see here, he's got all this cash laid out. It's obvious he's trying to pay for the bike. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel, I kind of feel for this guy. Now, most of the time, uh, every interaction that I've ever had with law enforcement, and I've had a couple over the years, um, mostly for traffic related violations. Usually what will happen is the officer will come up to you and they'll identify themselves and they'll say, hey, I'm Officer Smith from such and such jurisdiction and the reason why I stopped you today is but in this particular interaction none of this really occurred. They just kinda walked up to him and said, hey, you gotta come with us. So naturally the gentleman's gonna be rightfully confused and you know most Average individuals are going to be like, what the heck? We'll keep watching. You took too long? I don't know what the heck that means. So apparently, given a little bit of background, what I know about this interaction which led to the cops coming in here is uh, this gentleman was exactly doing that. He was apparently taking too long to do his checkout. As you can see here, he's definitely struggling, and I would estimate he has about at least three, four hundred bucks on that uh, counter there. And, uh, but, <laughs> you know, I totally get the whole taking too long thing. Uh, when I was in corporate sales a couple of years ago, or some years back now, actually, when I was at one of our conventions, we'd have breakfast uh, served to us first thing in the morning, usually at 7 a.m. And I would make it a point to get out there almost first, just to make sure I got there and 
got my stuff and got out of the way. Because quite frankly, I didn't want to get in the way of my other coworkers. You know, it's stressful. It's embarrassing to be able or to have to impede others because you're moving a little bit slower. So I totally get where he's uh, where this is a little awkward. You know, airport security or even checkout lines. You know, I don't go to self checkout lines for this precise reason. I don't even like self ba uh, self bagging. So you know. I prefer back in the day, you go to the grocery store, you get your items, you put it on the conveyor, and somebody at the end bags it for you. You know, I still kind of need that to this very day, because it is, uh, it does drain my energy, it makes me sweaty, and I have a hard time doing it. It's hard on my body to do self-bagging, uh, let alone self-checkout, you know, the bag stick, and, you know, if you only have one arm, good luck trying to get those bags separated when they all tend to stick together. You know, I haven't been in a grocery store uh, for a full grocery run in over two years since COVID. It was one of the good things that came from COVID because I was able to get groceries and, you know, not have to go through stuff like this. Do you want to walk us to walk you out or do you want to walk yourself out? Okay. First of all, I've never been a big fan of that. That's the police exerting their authority. Hey, you can come with us or we can take you out ourselves. We can, t we can take you out because you can either come with us uh, from your own will or we're going to forcefully take you out. And the fact that they're doing this to an individual that obviously is not really picking up what's going on yet, totally uncalled for in my opinion. I also find it a little demeaning the way they're just kind of picking up his money because he's again he's moving too slow. The officer here has no patience for the situation at hand. He's not really approaching this in a. Uh, in a manner that would be appropriate for this kind of individual. you got to move at the individual's pace, in my opinion, and I just thought it was a little demeaning the way he just started picking up his money. At least I would feel demeaned. To be identified, okay? And you're going to be issued a criminal trespass that says you can't come back to this business anymore, okay? Uh, so the fact that they mentioned criminal trespass means that he's going to, they're going to make it so he can't come back to that actual Target store, which means that somebody likely at the, from the employee side at Target, said we want this guy trespassed, and they're basically using the police to do it. Okay. <laughs> if they start dragging me like that, I'm going down. <laughs> That's just the way it's going to be. Uh, there are certain ways, and I don't know what this gentleman's uh, physical capabilities are. I don't know what his limitations are. There are some longer videos uh, that show a longer interaction. I purposely chose a shorter interaction video because I just didn't want to... It upsets me, and I just <laughs> I wanted to keep it short. But the way that they're kind of pushing the guy out of here, uh, you know, there's a... They don't know what his limitations are, and in my case, I would have gone to the ground. And what will happen is if you kind of grab me and kind of drag me in a direction that my body's not used to, my body will tense up, and then all of a sudden, I'm resisting. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, poor guy. <laughs> So obviously, a lot of struggle here. I don't know how much he's pushing back or if it's just his inability to keep up.
Don't try to hit any of us. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm sure they stuck that in there to give themselves a little bit more wiggle room to justify their actions at this point. Mm. All right, you got an idea, you man? Mm, not giving you any idea. You know, I'm identify yourself under arrest, okay? Which is it going to be? Mm, you're not police. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. are. We're no, you're not your security. Oh, yeah. I actually believe in this case. Uh... You know, again, his back was turned when the police first walked up. He probably thought these were a bunch of uh, target security and didn't really register that uh, these were actual uniformed police. Um, one thing that I will say, and I looked into this a little bit, the whole stop and ID thing. Uh, New Mexico is an ID state. And it gets real sketchy because what will happen is if a Police officer, if a police officer tries to get you to ID, and again, I'm not a First Amendment auditor, I'm not a legal scholar, and I've seen a lot of videos surrounding this topic, but it gets real murky. So, the fact that um, he's pushing back on giving his ID, you know, they're starting to build that case up to escalate the situation. Alright, then you're under arrest. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Refusing to identify yourself, correct? Refusing to identify yourself, correct? Again, he's trying to call 911 right now. He's probably not really paying attention to his surroundings as much. And police interactions are overwhelming for a lot of people, you know, even those with average ability. So I'm sure this is quite overwhelming for the gentleman. Who you calling, man? You ain't even you ain't He's calling call 911. That's what he said anyway. Say, just go ahead and put him in handcuffs, guys. He's refused to identify himself. Okay, hold on. Uh, I was just paying. I was just having my stuff locked in my family pack. And the security cars came, and I, I didn't take more time than anyone else. The other ones before me. No, no, no. Hey, hey, let me, let me. Uh, my, my name is Matthew McManus. Yeah. Uh, hey, no, that took my phone. Oh. And once again, he doesn't know who these guys are. He, it's. And I believe when he says that uh, he didn't think they were police, they probably thought these were a bunch of target security there to rough them up. I didn't think about this until just now, but <laughs> if you twist my arm in certain ways, I might wind up... Uh, <laughs> Doing a little pain shout there if you move it the wrong way. <laughs> you know, when you, when you have disability, um, <laughs> joints and uh, limbs don't necessarily move in traditional fashion, so they might actually be hurting him here. I'm at Target! Uh, I'm having, I'm having, having, having something cordial that they're beating me up! Beating them up. They, they, they won't let me talk to you. Okay. It's Albuquerque Police. He is under arrest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to identify yourself, sir? I'm calling 911. No, you're under arrest now for concealing identity. No, no, I. I and he's just overwhelmed. He's just, he's confused. He's probably a little lost in what's going on right now. Okay, that's your own fault. So now you're going to be charged, okay, with concealing identity, resisting officers, okay? No, no, I... And you're going to be trespassing. You can never come back here again, okay? Yeah, okay, like he's going to understand that. At least the way you're delivering it to him. I didn't know you were 
Are you a police officer? Yes, we told you that already. I didn't see your badge. Okay, well, we told you, right? You we all have badges? It's yeah. not our fault you didn't look, man. <laughs> not his fault they didn't look. Classy. Not his fault that you didn't look. Or not our fault that you didn't look. Real classy. Real classy. Okay, so let's talk a little bit of follow-up. It was, a, it was almost a year before there was any kind of real traction surrounding this incident. Uh, so according to this Daily Mail uh, article, uh, I did see a little bit of information on here. Notably... Uh, that the officer uh, by the name of Skeens was eventually arrested and under the charge of battery and false imprisonment and he was also involved with an unrelated shooting in that same uh, year so according to this article here Attorney General uh, Raul uh, Torres said today my office filed charges against former APD officer Kenneth Skeens for his role in the unlawful arrest of a customer with disabilities who was struggling to complete his purchase at a Target located in Albuquerque in August of 2022. Rather than acting as a professional public servant and a guardian of, a vulnerable, of vulnerable members of this community, Mr. Skeens engaged in abusive and unlawful behavior that undermined public safety and violated his oath as a peace officer in the state of New Mexico. He added, I just think it's outrageous that a police officer who should be in a position to try and help someone who is clearly struggling and is clearly dealing with some challenges, you know, as a customer in that store, would wind up in a position really abusing their power and using, you know, just really excessive force. Torres said about the shopper, he clearly hadn't committed a crime. Well said. Well said. So there's two other officers involved in the incident. And uh, it's, non it's unclear if there was any disciplinary action brought up against uh, Officer Flores or Officer Radigan. But uh, honestly, they deserve some scrutiny too. But... The police interaction is just part of this story, as far as I'm concerned. So the other half of this story falls within Target. Because somebody called the cops. And it might have been a customer that would have escalated it up to a Target employee who then escalated it up. Or maybe it was just somebody at Target that escalated it up to begin with. Uh, because once again, at no point did the Target employees ask the gentleman to leave. I don't know if they asked if they could help him out. Um, but obviously he was struggling. I'm sure it was a little awkward looking. But what you do is you help the guy out. What you don't do is you sick the police on him like a bunch of attack dogs. That's just flat wrong. And the fact that Target has made no public statements regarding this incident that I can find. Um, another YouTuber by the name of James Freeman did a video on this and he actually called Target and they wouldn't comment on it either. I'll leave a link uh, to his uh, his reaction to this video because it is actually pretty interesting. But the fact that Target escalated this, this themselves to the police and have not commented, not even one of those swarmy uh, nonsense media relations on such and such date, an incident happened where such and such employee did this, and this is our policy, and we regret the situation, and going forward, we're going to do what we can to be a great member of the community. You know, that's how these things normally go. But, um, didn't even get him one of those. And, once again, this guy was stripped of his dignity and his freedom because somebody thought he was taking too long. That's a disgrace. And to anybody that was involved in escalating this, cops, 
employees or public? Are you happy? Are you happy this guy went to jail? Do you feel empowered? What do I want out of this? Honestly, just a little awareness. I'm not out to make the police look bad. I'm not out to say, let's burn down all the targets. That's not what this is about. But can we just please do better? Do better. Albuquerque Police, do better. Target, do better. Review your procedures. If something doesn't fit, think of a new one. But don't sick the police on the guy. There's no reason for that. And to the victim, uh, Matthew, you know, good for you, man, for trying to go out there and live your life living with some independence, doing your thing. As long as people are trying to live good, honorable lives, I'll always cheer them on. So respect to you, man. And I appreciate you guys watching this. And the only thing I can say to the rest of the public is the same thing I say in all my videos. Just to do what's responsible, avoid what's irresponsible, make the most of what you got, and get respect. Mad respect. And that's what this is all about, respect. So I appreciate you watching, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you.